Now, what I'm gonna do is, um, as you go ahead and work that out, I'm actually gonna show you a neat thing in Desmos. Desmos is great for graphing functions, obviously. Um, but, fun fact, most of you probably don't realize it also evaluates integrals. So, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead, do the working for that, but just because I'm eyeing the time, I'm gonna show you how to use Desmos to confirm your working, um, and that might be helpful to you in the future. So, let's pull this up here. Now let's let's deal with the first one first. So I'm doing this integral underneath the parabola. And um, what you need to do is on the Desmos keyboard over in the bottom right hand corner, you can see it says functions. Um, and you might have started over here in trig or stats. Um, you've got all these other ones. The one we want is misc for miscellaneous. And then down there in the bottom left hand corner, I wonder if you spotted that curly looking S, that's the integral symbol. So it's expecting us to put in a lower boundary and an upper boundary, and then it will be very, very polite and evaluate for us. So you're gonna get negative two, click carefully up into that top boundary to negative one, and a bit of a tip for you here, make sure you put your, whatever you're integrating, put it into brackets so it integrates the entire thing, which in this case is two X squared plus eight X plus eight, I'm gonna close my bracket. And then in order to get that DX, you've gotta um, change keyboards. I did that really quickly. In the bottom left-hand corner of Desmos, you can see it says ABC. So that can change your keyboard to an alphabetical keyboard. And we, of course, are integrating with respect to X. And you get a value, which I hope when you do this, as you actually do the uh, integral, will confirm for you it's actually two thirds. So Max, I did do that quickly. Let me confirm for you again. On the normal Desmos keyboard, um, if you don't see the Desmos keyboard, by the way, you're gonna need to press, there's a little keyboard icon in the bottom right hand corner. Press that, this keyboard will appear. T click on functions, which is over there near the, uh, the top right of the keyboard. And then the integral sign is in the bottom left of this little grid of buttons that's just appeared. So hopefully you can see it right there. So there's the integral for A1. It does give us a value of two over three. And just to really emphasize for anyone who didn't miss it, right? Or who did miss it rather. Um, I'm not saying you can just put this into Desmos and ta-da, I've got an answer. You're gonna have to do this by hand, but this is a nice way to confirm that you did get the right answer. You're gonna get two thirds there. And then when you go over to the other integral over here, uh, I'm gonna put this on a whole new line. So just to uh, do this, yes, I know, Perrin, if, you've got a, if you've got an actual keyboard, I'm, I'm tapping this on my iPad, but if you've got an actual keyboard, there's a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that um, Desmos has. Like you can type in SQRT for square root. Um, and if you type in INT, you will get an integral like this. Let's get A2, which is the integral underneath the cubic. So that's from negative one all the way up to one. Pop in your brackets there. Close your brackets and then go with respect to X. And you get a very nice neat value of two, okay? Yes, we do wish you could take Desmos into the exam, that would be handy, but unfortunately not, sorry about that. So, therefore, and just to re-emphasize, and if you go and look in the, um, the notes that we're uploading onto every, sec uh, every session in online learning, you'll see my full working here where I've done the integral by hand. You will end up with two thirds and with two. So I would combine that by saying that the total area, let's get rid of Desmos now, we don't need it. The total area is equal to um, two thirds plus two, which is two and two thirds units squared full stop. Okay, so where we'd like you to go from here, um, just to end out the lesson, because we do have more to have a go at. I'm sorry I took so long, it's because we sort of started and stopped it, and I think that graph also slowed you down a fair bit. Um, questions three and four, which is not much, to be honest. You could actually honestly do it in like the next 20, 30 minutes. Um, these are the questions we'd like you to tackle um, for homework in, in the lead up to tomorrow's lesson. We're gonna go further into compound regions, um, but the, the skills we've covered today of looking at a, a volume, sorry, not a volume, an area very carefully, and dividing up into the appropriate sections, that's, uh, that's what you'll have. So, yes, you're welcome, Max. You're, um, you're, you're, I've been you know, trying to look out for you a little bit, but I make no apologies for what I'm giving you tomorrow, okay? So, 
Um, I hope that makes sense. I'll pause there. Um, if anyone wants to hang around with some questions on the basis of those two examples that we gave or from um, questions three and four in the exercise, then please go ahead. Um, but otherwise, for now, exercise 1F, have a go at them. Um, good luck, and we'll see you in tomorrow's lesson. Um, thanks again for working hard. I know the graphs are um, a lot of effort. It's calling back a lot of knowledge from a while back, but I hope it was useful, and um, stick around if you have any questions. Ben, you want me to do it longhand? Would you like to see the actual area? The integral, I should say. Okay, so we know where we're gonna end up. Uh, let me help you out with actually doing the evaluation, okay? So for starters, um, we're gonna go for the primitive function, right? So we're gonna increase all of our indices and then divide through. So it looks to me like I'm gonna get two x cubed on three. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna pause there. And then since I'm right at the start, I should have done this right at the beginning. Um, you might have noticed one of the tricks I used when I was graphing was I did some factorization, right? And that was really helpful, yeah? So I'm gonna do the same thing here and that will make things even easier for us. Um, part of the things, part of what makes this difficult is that you have a lot of substitution to do. Every single term that you've got, you have to do um, a, a substitution into your calculator. In fact, you have to do two because you've got the lower bound and the upper bound. It's questions three and four in exercise 1F, Sasha. Hopefully that helps. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna do some factorization that will really help me out uh, in terms of making this much simpler to deal with. So first thing, I'm gonna take out a factor of two. So this negative two to negative one is still there. Leaves me with this. Um, this was the same thing that I had from earlier, which I factorized in order to find its x-intercept, right? So I'm gonna do that trick again because then I can use another piece of knowledge that I'm aware of and I wonder if you've pieced it together yet. x squared plus 4x plus 4, this is x plus 2 all squared. Now if this was the question I handed you, I hope your brain is going, hold on, I, want, I can do something with this. I don't have to expand. I mean I can um, and I can still integrate but it's just going to take longer, yeah? And even when you have a calculator to help you, you just got a lot of substitution to do. I can use reverse chain rule here, yeah, does that help? So that will not only make this easier to do, it's just a less error prone method, okay? So trap for young players. In fact, when I did this question myself, I, I designed this question because I am sort of was a bit sick of the textbook examples. Then I just went through in my own working and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna do it all term by term. Like I myself have factorized five minutes earlier and I forgot to do it when I was integrating. So something which you get better with, with experience. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the reverse chain rule now. So I have a look. This is a really nice example because the inside derivative happens to be one, so I kind of don't need to worry about it. I increase the index and then I divide through by the index, like so, okay? So now I'm going from negative two to negative one. Um, I can factorize again, the way I did the two at the front, I can take that divided by three at the front as well. So that goes two thirds. That's x plus two cubed, negative two, negative one. Um, what have I got here? Well, um, the two thirds comes out the front and then I have some really nice, easy things to evaluate, right? So I'm gonna have negative one uh, plus two, that's my top boundary, so that gives me negative one plus two is just one. There's my upper boundary, evaluated. I subtract the lower boundary, but then I've got negative two plus two, which is zero cubed. Look at that. It's almost like I planned this, right? So this is gonna be two thirds multiplied by one take away zero, which is just one. And this is the answer that we saw before. So I guess if you wanted, you know, if I had gone back to this step right up here, let's just suppose I didn't do any of that simplification, didn't use reverse chain rule, what is this thing gonna look like? Well, I'm going to be integrating, uh, this is what I started doing before I stopped myself, two x cubed on three plus eight uh, x squared on four will be four x squared plus eight x. And then I'm gonna be doing that from negative two to negative one, um, which I'm very confident will give me exactly the same answer. It's just that I'm gonna to have to evaluate so many more things and it's gonna take me a whole lot of time. Like even just to write it is gonna take me forever. I'm just gonna go, just for the sake of illustration, to the power of two times that because negative one cubed plus four, lots of one. I'm even doing some shortcuts in my head. I'm gonna take away, uh, let's see, okay, so now I'm doing negative two, two lots of negative, eight on three plus four lots of negative two squared is four plus eight lots of negative two. Oh wow, I'm just 
I'm getting a headache just looking at that thing, okay? Um, it'll give you the right answer, but it's where it pays to think before you move forward um, and it'll save you a lot of time and effort and also be less error prone, like I mentioned before. Are you happy with that, Ben?